Hey there, and welcome to Large Format Friday. I'm your host, Matt Mirage, and if this is the first time you're stopping by, here's a playlist of our entire first season of LFF. And if you haven't subscribed yet, each and every Friday, we're gonna bring you something new in the world of large format and sometimes ultra large format photography. Today, you guessed it, it's ultra large format time. So I was reminded a few weeks ago, uh, thanks to some forums and social media, that this month is 820. And I just so happen to have an 8x20. It's not like a legit 8x20, it's, uh, it's a bit of a Frankenstein job. It's hacked onto my favorite system, the Cinar. I tapped some screws into the 100-year-old framework here of this old Corona, and now I have geared movements in 8x20. Absolute overkill. And the reason you haven't seen me shooting with it sooner is uh, this camera had some problems, actually, up until a few weeks ago. What I'd done since I tapped this into the bottom of the camera, I had just taken a six by six board, which the Corona takes, and a Cinar sized board, which is like the five and a half board uh, that it takes, and kind of like liquid nails them together. It was a pretty hack job. And that hack job lasted the better part of a year, which was longer than I thought it would. Once that broke down though, I was kind of SOL until recently. So as a solution to this problem of mounting the hardware correctly, I had my buddy Jeff over at 20th Century Camera. He 3D printed this very ingenious little part which actually gives me adequate spacing and a good connection. So, I mean, isn't that awesome? This is 3D printed. So he 3D printed a six by six Corona frame with some good depth, uh, a spacer so I can have it recessed into the 8x20 as well as the Cinar, and then the same exact Cinar frame, and it fits, well, like a glove. So as a summer test of the old 8x20, I'm gonna be taking a little family portrait, Lauren and the doggos, but, well, we have long dogs, I've got a long camera, and we're gonna do a long little scape. We're gonna cover from the uh, from the walnut trees all the way through the backyard, really try to get some depth in there. And unlike Pinhole or RA4, we're working with good modern fast film. We're shooting HP5 in here today, so hopefully that's gonna give us plenty of speed to get a portrait where they hold still. So composing on this 8x20 ground glass is wicked, wicked hard, uh, mainly because uh, it's just so much wider than what I'm used to. Essentially, it's two 8x10 ground glasses just smushed together, but it, so I, I really can't imagine just like two 8x10 frames consecutive like that. I still can't imagine that. So one piece of advice I received from a gentleman, Mr. John Powers up in Northeast Ohio, was when you're assembling a ultra large format shot, what you wanna do is look for interesting subject matter on the edges of the frame. So in this case, I've got these walnut trees kind of anchoring one side of the frame and uh, Lauren and the doggos are a little bit off center and the hope here, Zil, Zil, can you go over this way? I need to see your length. Yes, you are long dog, good girl. So now I've also got uh, a long dog kind of lengthening out that side of the frame and it kind of leads into these other trees in the background. So it's all about layering things in the composition. So I don't 100% trust the holder that came with this. The camera itself is pretty good, but the holder is definitely suspect. So I'm not gonna pull the dark slide out the whole way. And we're gonna go an eighth of a second at 45 here. And just a little shopkeeping or a little housekeeping stuff. When you're getting started in large format or ultra large format, really just something that you haven't done before, 
if you already have worked with a component of it, it's really good to be able to control that process. Now, if the thing that you're good with is maybe color film, okay, maybe you don't get color film in this size, you'll go broke really quick. But if you have a black and white film that you're already comfortable with and you know the look of and you can kind of manipulate it around, that's a good film to choose. That's why I work with Ilford HP5. Plus, when you work ultra large format, we're working usually with higher f-stops than we would and a little extra speed goes a really long way. For that picture I shot of Zill, that was a shot that I'd been wanting to do for several years. I had this long dog, I had this long format camera, I thought they're a perfect match. Now the problem is, Zill's a kind of panicky hound, so I had to be creative with the lighting. I wanted the lighting to look natural, but also not disturb her, so I used my giant Speedatron 2400 watt pack, and I threw it through a beauty dish through the front door diffuser. All right, we're here in downtown Columbus. We are overlooking the Scioto River, which is looking very calm. It is, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 minutes before sunset starts and just trying to get, trying to get another good look. So for an exposure that's going to be at F45, a quarter of a second kind of puts me right in the middle there. It places my shadows on zone four-ish. It's gonna be plenty. Nice. Whew. You know, in terms of effort, this is about five times as much effort as eight by 10. But if we got it, the look should be worth the effort. So we're gonna head back to the darkroom now and develop these out. I've got some 16 by 20 paper, hopefully it's still good. And we're gonna do some contact sheets with those, see what happens. Okay, so we're back here at 400 West Rich. You've seen the darkroom space before if you're a viewer of the channel. If you haven't, subscribe. And we print every now and then, you know, check it out. But my negatives have dried and now I wanna see what they look like as contact sheets. I have some 16 by 20 paper. I'm going to strip those down into eight by 20s and do some contact prints. got some prints rinsing right now and I just wanted to show uh, one little thing about using paper that's old and unknown. There's a reason I mentioned I was using it just for testing. There's the old paper right there. It's very fogged, it's very flat, there's no there's no good D-max, there's no like really deep black coming out of the print but it's kind of helping the weaker shadow areas but once we switch to fresh paper it's almost an entirely different print. It almost looks like we took the contrast slider and we just cranked it up. There's really good, now I can really start to see the separation between all of the highlight values and those shadow values, while they still have detail, they go quite a bit darker than they did before. You know, there's merit to either side of, you know, which photograph you like. However, if we want to get a good representation of our negative, we should probably use some fresh paper. This stuff was probably five, six years expired and in really bad conditions. This is fresh stuff. Old stuff, fresh stuff. When in doubt, use fresh paper. All right, so the only thing left, left to do now is, uh, is rinse off these prints. They're fiber, so they're gonna need about an extra half hour to 45 minutes of wash. And then I've got a pane of glass and a squeegee, where I'll squeegee those off, and then I'll place those into my blotter book. That'll allow me to take the prints home and make sure they stay relatively flat. They're still gonna be a little wobbly, but I'll be able to bring them with me, which is really important.
Ah, uh, all right. Well, what'd you think? Eight by 20. It's quite a lot to it, right? Big old sheets of film. Only twice as much surface area as eight by 10, but I would say it's more than twice the effort that you have to put into it. You got a big old camera, really specialty lenses that have to cast a monster image circle and lots of refined technique that's gonna go into it. I didn't know, this wasn't like shooting eight by 10 where I knew the results were gonna come out perfectly. In this case, the results weren't that perfect, but it was still great. There was a lot of work done and there's a lot of things that I can improve upon. So if you're somebody that likes to challenge and likes to push beyond, like just do something more and more and more each time, maybe ultra large format will be the right thing for you. If you have any questions about ultra large format, you can drop those down below in the comments. This is definitely not the last time we're gonna mention it on the channel. We're going to cover it again. There's more to do. I've got lots more HP5 left to play around with and we're just gonna keep moving through this stuff. One thing that's really special about today's episode is it marks six months of Large Format Friday. This is gonna be the end to what I'm gonna call season one of Large Format Friday. So for those of you that have stuck around since the beginning or maybe just picked it up, thank you so much for continuing to subscribe and check things out. You know, let me know what you think of Large Format Friday so far. I think we're really going somewhere with this. I don't think we're gonna stop anytime soon but let me know what direction you wanna see things go. I'm still gonna tackle tutorials. I'm still gonna try crazy new stuff that I've never tried before. And all in you know, the effort to make sure that folks know that this stuff exists, know that there's these big old cameras that can produce some really, really cool looking images. Thanks again for stopping by and hopefully we'll catch you next time for more Large Format Friday.